Hello everyone. In this video, we will be solving UGC in December 2013 question paper. If you want to check out our courses, then you can go to our website, which is www.dgmentor.com. Over there, you can go to the courses section. In courses section, you can check out our comprehensive courses for GATE, UGC NET, and placement preparation. Currently, we are offering huge discounts on UGC NET computer science video lecture subscription and test series. So, if you want to enroll to our video lectures and subscription and test series, you can always visit our website and please call on the numbers below. Please don't forget to like and share the videos with your friend. Question number nine is which one of the following is not a step of requirement engineering? So, these are some steps are given so requirement elicitation analysis requirement design and doc requ uh, requirement documentation so let's discuss about requirement engineering first then we'll discuss uh, the requirement engineering steps one by one so basically requirement engineering goal is to find out what user really need what is the new need of the customer okay so according to that uh, first uh, all the developer team listen what are the customer demands then they produce one large document written in a natural language they prepare one SRS and it contains the description this SRS when uh, you know if this is a customer so after the discussion from the customer they prepare one document this is a SRS document which is written in the written language and it contains the description so I'm writing here it contains it contains the description what the system what the system will do without describing without describing how to do it how to do it basically this srs is used for the customer so that they will get to know what the system will do without because uh, mentioning how to do it it's very redundant information for you know for the customers also so now in the requirement engineering this type of work is to be done so the first step is requirement engineering step first step is requirement elicitation means to gather the requirements so basically requirement elicitation is the first step and it is an activity that help us to understand what problem has to be solved and what customer expect from the software right so with the help of requirement elicitation we get to know two things कि हमें क्या problem को solve करना है and second thing is कि customer की क्या expectation है software से okay so for requirement elicitation we use different methods uh, like interviews brainstorming sessions like in interviews our purpose is to understand each other right so they arrange meeting with the customers and in the requirement uh, you know in the in this uh, requirement elicitation the requirement engineers used as as a mediators between the customer and the development team right so they ask some uh, questions to the customers right according to that they prepare their notes and then you know then prepare the documentation right so the next step is requirement requirement analysis this is the second step after requirement elicitation so at this step we gather all the informations which is required to develop the software the next step is requirement analysis mm -hmm. now requirement analysis is the second most important uh, you know you can say essential activity in this uh, you know in this step we refine the gathered information in order to make consistent and unambiguous requirements right so you know in the step one there is a collection of information is there so in the requirement analysis we refined and we delete all the unambiguous requirements which is present in the requirement elicitation step so this is the requirement analysis step now the next step is requirement documentation okay 
So in the requirement documentation, uh, we prepare one SRS document, right? And uh, in the SRS do document, everything is present uh, about what the system will do without describing how to do it. So the, some, there are some characteristics of SRS document that it should be consistent, right? Every requirement uh, should be specified using some standard terminology. As I, this document should be correct user expectations that are exactly uh, which is uh, you can say jo jo aapki users ki requirement should be present exactly in the SRS and it should be unambiguous or uh, you can say it should be complete traceable hona chahiye modifiable hona chahiye you can easily modify or you, if you want to make any changes in the SRS you can easily do it so these are some characteristics of SRS right so after preparing the SRS the, the then the last step is requirement verification last step is requirement verification this is the last step so now check requirement elicitation is the step of uh, requirement engineering yes when we gather the information from the customers now the second step is requirement analysis when we refine uh, the already gathered requirement in order to make it consistent and unambiguous yes this is the step now third is the requirement design now no such step is there so this is wrong and the requirement documentation yes this is a step where we prepare the SRS document so this is true this is false so option C is the one which is the incorrect now question number 10 is testing of a software with actual data and in actual environment is called alpha testing beta testing regression testing and this none of the above now let's talk about first acceptance testing because uh, alpha testing and beta testing are the part of the acceptance testing Let's discuss uh, what is acceptance testing. So basically, this kind of testing is conducted when the when the when software is developed for a specific number of customer. Well, uh, for a you know limited number of audience के लिए जब कोई software को हम develop करते हैं तो in that kind of situation we use this acceptance testing. But when we have uh, you can say large number of people, so this acceptance testing is basically of two types the first one is alpha and the second one is beta so first one is alpha testing and the second one is beta testing so these two you know these two testing alpha and beta these two testing conducted for anonymous customer means for large number of peoples and this type of testing conducted for specific conducted for specific customer okay now let's talk about alpha testing and beta testing separately so alpha testing is uh, both the you know both the testing is done by the customers but the place where they test that particular software it's different so the alpha uh, testing is done by the customer alpha testing is done by the customer at developer site at developer site only right and in the beta testing done by the customer both are uh, you know both of the testing is done by the customer but this testing is done at the users or you can say customer site so this is the main difference between these two uh, testing and uh, in this alpha testing you can say developer is present developer present but this in this testing uh, this testing is done by the customer at the user side that's why developer is not present so it's absent okay so basically alpha testing carried out before the release of software before the release of software and it is done by the after uh, after getting the failure are reported so after the delivery this kind of uh, testing is done right so now this is a white box testing or oh, sorry this is a black box testing type of a black box testing and this is a white box testing why 
because when customer is present at the you know developer site so it's able to you know go through the internal structure developer uh, able to go to the internal structure and uh, with the help of input and uh, check the output with the design output so it's able to test the whole software but at the beta site only customer is there so it only he is only able to test with the help of input and output right uh, he is not considering the internal structure of the code so that's why it's the type of black box testing and this is the white box testing and there is one more testing is that regression test so regression testing you can say is a part it's something like a maintenance testing because uh regression testing hum jab karte hain jab hum agar humne koi order apne system ke andar koi change kiya hai to we test it whether it working well now or not कि चेंज करने के बाद भी हमारा सिस्टम अच्छे से वर्क कर रहा है या नहीं सो इट्स अ काइंड ऑफ मेंटेनेंस टेस्टिंग नाउ कम बैक टू अवर क्वेश्चन टेस्टिंग ऑफ सॉफ्टवेयर विद एक्चुअल डेटा एंड इन एक्चुअल इन्वायरमेंट इज कॉल्ड एक्चुअल इन्वायरमेंट एंड एक्चुअल आई नो डेटा वो होता है जब हम कस्टमर के साइट पे करते हैं लेट सपोज हमने कोई एप्लीकेशन हमने लॉन्च की है तो वो जब हम कस्टमर को डिलीवर करवाएंगे तो वहां पर जो टेस्ट जो कस्टमर्स हम उसे यूज करेंगे तो वो उसका एक्चुअल इन्वायरमेंट होगा एक्चुअल डेटा होगा तो दिस इज नॉट एक्चुअल यू कैन से इन्वायरमेंट वेयर डेवलपर आर प्रेजेंट दिस इज एक्चुअल इन्वायरमेंट जहाँ कस्टमर्स हैं उसे यूज कर रहे हैं फिर वो फीडबैक दे रहे हैं कि वो सही है या नहीं है सो दिस इज एक्चुअल इन्वायरमेंट सो दैट्स वाई द करेक्ट आंसर इज बीटा टेस्टिंग नॉट एल्फा टेस्टिंग राइट Now question number eleven is the student marks should not be greater than hundred. This is integrity constraint, referential constraint, overdefined constraint, and feasible constraint. So these two constraints are not useful in DBMS. They are used in uh, software engineering. So obviously these two options are not there. Now the left one is integrity constraint and the referential constraint. Referential is constraint is useful when there is two table and the column. This is the reference column and it referred to this. right this table so in this type of situation there is some uh, you know triggering actions we are taking care of uh, in the referential constraints the first one is on delete and there is on update so when we delete something okay so we have to take care of this uh, refer reference table and when we delete or we update in this table we have to take care of this table also so with the help of set null set default and set cascade okay so same in the same in the update also null default and cascade it means that when we delete something here so if uh, the same data is also present here so we put null there and if we delete something from here we delete some default value or we add something new value there so referential constraint is useful when there is a foreign key and uh, some table refers to other table so this is useful uh, in this situation and the next one is integrity constraint so integrity con ensures that if this is a database right if this is a database so it ensures that changes made to the database by authorized users ki jo bhi aap isme jo changes aap karoge wo authorized user hona chahiye and there should not be any loss of data or any kind of inconsistency so integrity constraint take care of this now the student mark should not be greater than 100 so all kind of data related problems it's handled by the integrity constraint so option a is the right one now go bottom and skip three commands are given one after another in a database file of 30 records 30 records are there 1 2 3 4 5 up to 30 like 25 26 27 28 29 and 30 so it shifts the control to what now go bottom so the shift is here and it go to the bottom so i'm at here right go bottom after appending this command and the next command is skip 3 so we have to skip 3 so first second and third so after skipping three records i am my control is here so now you have to tell uh, where is my control now so at the 27th record my my control is present okay so question number 13 is an er model includes what so first is an er diagram portraying entity types so any entity is like employee department so all entity is uh, you know portraying by er diagrams attribute of each 
entity types like employee id employee name is also represented in by er models represent a relationship among entity types relationships like works for is also include by er diagrams and all kind of integrity constraints we have already discussed about that that reflects the business rules about data not captured in the er diagrams so, so this is also true so option number a is the right one now question number 14 is based on the cardinality ratio and participation associated with the relationship type choose either the form key design the cross referencing design or mutual referencing design so correct is participation constraints participation constraints is there right